is to discover a state within us that helps us to think, speak, and act in calmness, in peace, in love, and wisdom. Fact is that that is the goal of our life. Instead of blaming, complaining, reacting to a situation outside. How many times you reacted to a situation, a person, or an event outside this week? How many times we were sad? How many times we were in anxiety? That tells us the story that how much we have learned. Even our master says that if we, even if we change one percent every week, that is enough. A small step daily, that will help us to bring about that peace, happiness, love. Oh, no, no, but you all are changing, so I have nothing. I'm just talking about it. So. It's very important because we want peace and happiness and still we get upset, we get sad. In the morning this little girl, she said I was sad because my two younger siblings have started going to school. I cannot play. That's why I feel sad. Ah, so you don't, so you see that it's a matter of ignorance. So I told her, don't you want them to, to get knowledge going to the school? No, no, that is not. Then what is the reason? And ultimately she said, there is no reason to be sad. How many hours you play? Mostly I play for two or three hours. Okay, let them come out, to come from the school, return from the school, and then you start playing. So the sadness is unfounded. Can I find, can I discover, can I contemplate and reflect that my sadness, my grief, my suffering are unfounded in the life. Or we want to get carried away what the society say. Oh, don't worry, you divorce, don't worry, you know. We all are here to help you boost the ego. We unnecessarily create problem for others and problem for ourselves. Eastern wisdom educates our mind that how to rise above the society. And to rise above these unconscious habits of the society I have to learn from my experiences every day. If I do not learn from my experiences, I continue to get carried away by some unknown forces that is working inside me that pushes me to blame, complain, react, and get sadness. You know, it happened today, this 14-year-old girl, I've been educating her almost for the last two and a half years, and she got it. She said, oh, so she instantly said that, do you think, do you mean that sadness is unfounded? Yes. Think it over.
same way, our sadness, our blame, our complaint, our suffering are unfounded. Our master says, how to live wisely is to contemplate and reflect on each situation, each event. We should not get carried away by them. So the first step, I have been talking about it. I don't know, let me know it. Let me know the sadness. And I discussed about it last time, that if I see you and become sad, it means you are an object of sadness. But for your honey, you are an object of happiness. How is it possible that you are an object of sadness and you are an object of happiness at the same time? Think. I'm not saying, you know, believe blindly. I say, I am asking you to think. How can be any object outside be an object of sadness or unhappiness for you and happiness for me? I was watching Discovery Channel and they caught a, a smuggler. He was uh, totally upfront. He told the border police, you know, I enjoy cocaine. That's why I brought it. Why don't you understand? You cannot arrest me. <laughs> he was speaking to the police. And I said, yes, that's very good. Oh, come on. No, no, we, uh, we caught you. No, you did not catch me. I am addicted to it. So that's why I enjoy taking it. That's why I brought it. So when I pick up an object outside, get carried away, and then the mind takes over me, the mind tries to prove wrong the right. That is known as the instinct. Huh? I'm making it very simple. That is known as the instinct or impulsive behavior or habitual or addiction, whatever you want to say. So we can replace the cocaine in our life with blame, with complaint, with reaction. It is the same thing. Uh, it, it never, don't think that it is something different. It is the same thing because I get carried away. I enjoy reacting. Deep inside, I want to enjoy the very sadness. My honey left me. Better left me. Better that he or she has left. We were talking yesterday, I and Anne, that you know, a girl changes her boyfriends a couple of times. <laughs> well, I'm not telling you who is the girl, but uh, you see, this is impulsive reaction. This is instinctive. But I'm so happy. He is studying. She is studying neurosciences. And I'm not, the girl is not able to find her reason. All of our behavior and attitude comes from the impulse, instinct, and habits. Only control one can do is by one's own intellect. The intellect demands thinking. Thinking means that I must get the right knowledge. Impulse and instincts are simply means that so natural, we, we claim it so natural and innate, a fixed pattern 
a behavior in animals in response to the outer world. Where is a fixed behavior? It is a projection automated in animals for seeking security, safety, sleep and pleasure. You know, when we have a sudden urge that distracts, diverts and wastes time and money, that is what is impulse. Instinct are our emotional, intellectual, even the physical experiences. Instincts are emotional, physical, mental, whatever you say, experience, and impulses are an instanters. Instanters. Then we don't want to listen to it. So that is what has happened to this guy who said, I like this cocaine, you know. Why you are catching me? You have no right. I bought it. And they caught him in the JFK airport. So now this uh, police was saying that beyond two gram of cocaine, it is illegal. And he was arguing that, what do you mean? If two gram is legal, uh, so amount, greater the amount, makes, uh, makes it illegal? What you are talking about? I take six grams every day. Very interesting, you know, I saw the conversation. No, no, I take six grams every day. If two gram is legal, then uh, any amount can be legal. Logic is there. So replace it with a blame reaction. I reacted because you made me upset. Question is why you are upset with anyone outside. <laughs> Do you see? That is what our masters are teaching. If you are an object of upset, sadness and grief, then we can think, but you cannot be an object of sadness. No one, no event, no situation in our life. So in case of animals, because they live with the lower self-awareness, their, their life is programmed, their mind is programmed. So they need to do it in order to survive. We have other choices. Are you seeing? Are you thinking? So when I have other choices, then I do not label any object, any situation as an object of sadness and suffering in the world outside. My mind is free. When my mind is free, that freedom we want that is known as emotional freedom. I'm just connecting all the dots. That is known as the emotional freedom. So it is not that you are free today and you are bound tomorrow. You are emotionally free all the time. I believe you will understand a very subtle point. You live in the sense of emotional freedom all the time. Then you, the mind is not working on you. And when the mind is not working on you, in that state of emotional freedom, you discover the peace and happiness are within you. I also commit mistakes, but then I instantly become aware and I correct it. I tell you a very small, unnoticeable event. Yesterday my honey bought a flask. So normally we have many flasks in our home. 
So she told me and I said, oh, we already have many flasks. It was an instant impulsive reaction. We already have. Means what? I was challenging why you got it. But then I realized it was impulsive. So after the session is over, I went there and I said, this flask is very beautiful. I have to correct it. Now sometime out of the ego, we don't correct it. I bought so many things impulsively. So if she has bought one simple thing, why should I react? The flask is very beautiful. Oh, it takes uh, it it takes a lot of, it keeps a lot of water in it. So I could see that she has changed. You know, yes, yes. You know, it takes to about two liters of the water, and it looks very good. So I can take anywhere. Ah, it's awesome. I said yes. You have taken a right decision. Otherwise, these small events causes a lot of challenge. You may think that it's a small. First, we say that it is a small. Second, we prove that it is right. But we don't see how we live our life. That causes a lot of problems in our relationship, in our An inborn feeling, you can say, a feeling, a hunch, or inclination. That we express through the thought, speech, and action is what is an instinct. So you just be very clear, anxiety is one. When we express that anxiety, fear is the second, anger or frustration is the third, depression is the fourth, loneliness of four, boredom is the fifth, and the guilt is the sixth one. These are the six common instinct we carry for. And they are going to create a lot of challenges in your life. First, take care of this. Then look at how your honey responds. That is secondary. How your relations. Fear, anxiety, anger or frustration. Or you can add both as one, depression and, uh, fr and loneliness and guilt. Guilt, you know, you have complex, superior, inferior, complex, or guilt. They cause a lot of challenges in your life. You have started thinking, very good. You have not started thinking, you know, no, I don't have any of one of them, and still I'm suffering. Not possible. Not possible. And the problem is, Perhaps we all are about over 50, so even at the age of the 50, we have those problems. <laughs> we didn't learn from our experience. My goodness. <laughs> that is, you know, where the master says, you know, should I laugh at you? <laughs> Uh, you claim that you are more intelligent. That is what we say an emotional dependence or attachment. And uh, from attachment, the desire comes. And from the desire, the level of the greed and the pride and the delusion all come together that I have a choice to think, speak, and act free from instinct and impulses, and still I do it. But if I'm mindful, 
if I recognize every day that this is how I recognize every day that I thought, I spoke, I act instinctively and impulsively and there is a scope to correct it, you correct it instantly. But the biggest barrier is the ego. How? Why should I do it? You made me upset. Animals do not have that ego. They fight and then they again. We have a higher level of self-awareness to evolve, to go above the impulsive and instinctive nature. Instead, we build our strong ego and then we are ready to blame, complain. Just, just see, check, check our life. Our master says that, why don't you understand this? And we have been living this kind of a life. Days after days, weeks after weeks, months after months, years after years. Ah, in the end of the journey, we say, you know, no one helped me, no one supported me. And our relations also say, better you leave the house. <laughs> you have been nagging us all the life, all our life. <laughs> John, John says this beard guy is crazy, but this is a fact. You, you see the life. See the life. This is the meaning, the mind is working on us. And the moment the mind works on us, the life has an endless suffering. Every time you wake up, the suffering starts. Before you sleep, suffering continues. Either you say impulsive and instinctive nature, we have a right, we have a higher level of awareness to get out of it. Or you say emotional dependence, same thing. You say the impurities of the mind, same thing. So the single phrase of our masters talks about let me work on the mind. Mind, you have to go through me. What you are going to think, speak and act. This is known as a higher awareness. And moving to the higher awareness is the first step. To live with the higher awareness, learning from your experiences what makes us a seeker, and the seeker always succeeds. It's a matter of thinking. Think. Contemplation and reflection. The more you contemplate and reflect, you will find out they will start disappearing. So Eastern wisdom uses the intellect to refine, to purify the mind, to drop that emotional dependence in our day-to-day -day living. My honey was so happy that I appreciated and praised him. No, I was helping myself. I was helping myself. So sometime I miss, no problem, no doubt, it's okay. But I don't want to miss. You have that commitment. You start learning from your experiences and the life changes.
close your eyes adjust and align your body <coughs> close your eyes find out the best position of your body and best position so that mind says it is a comfortable position very good it's a comfortable position and then you look at the neck joint I'm making such a practice so simple you know you might be thinking philosophical but when you go to the neck joint mentally you are becoming conscious of the neck joint in that conscious awareness you feel what do you feel when you move the mind consciously impulse and instinct to work subconsciously and habitually but when you are feeling consciously you have a feeling of sensation comfort and state you're just giving a chance to the mind that is the meaning of being comfortable anytime anywhere shoulder joints being there feeling sensation comfort and steadiness hip joint so you see that you know i just uh, give you an example so hip joint feeling, sensation, comfort and steadiness. So when you listen to it and you are doing the practice, the time comes, your mind says I have to be comfortable. And you continue doing until you experience the, at the comfort at the physical level. Now that there are only three joints, no there are many joints, elbows, sensation, comfort, and state. So we are not in a hurry. For example, you look at the wrist joint mentally. You are there. You are looking there, but what happens? The thought enters and stops you being aware of it. So you have to repeat it. So you're not doing anything to the body, you're just becoming aware of all the joints. What will happen? You start experiencing, sensation deepens, comfort is there and steadiness. That too without doing anything. Understand the point of doing nothing. You know, you see, every time I change the practice means I give you a deeper insight. Because the mind is in the habit of working impulsively and instinctively with emotional dependence, so it says what to do. And being comfortable, we say do nothing, just watch and observe and settle in being comfortable. So the two steps are fact non-practice being carefree thoughts are coming unwanted unwelcome uninvited thought enters into the mind and i become aware because it is unwelcome uninvited strange thoughts i don't support it how do i not support it i do nothing let these thoughts come and go let me see they are separate from me I believe you must have gone, contemplated and reflected on the simile I use, mental traffic, road traffic. You stand across a road, you are watching the traffic. So, mental traffic, you are watching the traffic of the thoughts. You do not have a luxury to be in the middle of the highways to watch the traffic. 
accident. That is the meaning we get carried away by thought, feeling and emotions. When we are getting carried away, it is impulsive and instinctive in nature, emotional dependence, attachment. So now you're, you are asking the mind to face with the fact so when the mind faces with the fact, means thoughts are coming and going, they stay and they leave. What the heck, why should I get carried away by them? They are separate from you, you are carefree. Any thought, any feeling, any sensation, any idea. So why we should be cared for many reasons. One of them is that non-understanding should be converted into an understanding about the thought, feeling and images and emotions springs from this mind. And then, Buddha says breath awareness, so understand this breath awareness in a very simple way. So what is this breath awareness? You keep looking at the breath. Breath is voluntary, voluntary and involuntary. We can make it voluntary and it can remain involuntary. So let us see that involuntary breath means what? You are not changing anything. No, but I am aware of the breath. Yes, you have to be aware of the breath. So what do you mean by aware of the breath? Awareness of the breath is the knowledge about the breath. No, no, but what is the knowledge about the breath? Breath is going in and out, first knowledge. Okay. So you're not changing anything. That is also an important point. That is knowledge. That I'm not changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath. I'm simply looking at the breath. When I look at the breath, I find the breath moves in through the nose and moves out from the nose. And when the breath goes into the nose and comes out from the nose, what happens? I feel the sensation of the breath. How simple it is. But this simple is not successful for a non-seeker. It is successful for a seeker. You see, I'm just giving every reason why we succeed and why we fail. So you are, you have an olive, the breath is going in and out, you are not changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath, and you feel the sensation inside the nose when the breath goes in and out. So I also explained why we succeed, why we fail. We are a seeker. And why we fail? Why we fail? Because mind starts moving in habitually to thoughts that are uninvited. So what happens? The mind says, claims that I'm aware of the breath. What do you mean? But I had a lot of thoughts. Uh -huh. Look at it.
So in that case of a non-seeker, we give another opportunity to the mind to change. We say, okay, three points are there, that you are not changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath. You are, you have a knowledge, you are aware the breath is going in and out, and you feel the sensation. But the thoughts, feeling, and the images, they overlap, they superimpose over the three-pointed awareness of the breath. So we say, okay, at the fourth point, just check it where this is happening. Where this is, where this is happening means what? Where the breath is moving. The breath is moving in space. So there is a space, the breath goes in. There is a space, the breath, breath is out. Like you are aware of your entire home and you are sitting in a living room. In the background, you are aware of the space. There are 52 points of awareness of the breath. The master never fails. We are just, uh, just four-pointed awareness. But remember, we are not asking the mind to do anything. The moment this mind one starts doing something, it goes habitual and impulsive. That is one way to approach any mindfulness. Well, there are active steps also. So our mind says, no, no, it is not, still it is not working. I have a lot of thoughts. So no problem if you have a lot of thoughts. So when the breath goes in, the moment you see, feel, and become aware, start counting in one. Now you see that we have added the fifth point. Counting in one. When it comes out, count out one. Just drop it. Non-verbal counting. You know. You did not intentionally count how many people are in a session, but you know. Same way, breath is going in and out on its own, no control, no change. If change, mind has taken over you. That is what I was talking about. It's very subtle, it's independent, it's free, it's a play, it's a fun. Go on counting the breath. In one, out one, into. Uh, to, with every breath, the mind is moving on the breath, counting in one, out one, into, out two, one, counting the breath. There is a space on which the object is the breath so that we can count. And we are not changing the object that is the breath. We feel the sensation and that gives me a trigger to count. So you are aware of the trigger. Means you are already living in a higher awareness. In a normal given day, the breath is involuntary. We are not at all aware whether we are breathing or not. So we say, okay, let us be conscious and aware of the breath. This is a, a beautiful journey with a five-point awareness. in which you are aware of the space, you are aware of the breath going in and out, you are aware of the sensation, you are not changing the rate and the rhythm of the breath and you are counting. 
But this journey has to be done every day. At least you should be counting. Maybe start from 1 to 25. And 1 to 25 counting. You will know. What you will know? You will know if your counting is right or wrong. I'm not saying you are you are, you don't know the counting, but it it happens because of the impulsive mind. So now what you should you just count from one to twenty five and you count it correctly, you restart from one to twenty five. You can, your mind made a mistake because you your thought your thought takes the mind away. No worries, you recognize it and restart from one. So one to twenty-five every time you will come to know how many times you made a mistake. It's a fun and play. And it takes a long time. 25 breath normally takes two minutes. And if there is a attention span that continues for two minutes, your mind will be absorbed. No way. Just two minutes? Yes. And the two minutes will extend to 20 minutes easily. Just do the practice this week. Once you listen to the recording and you reach to this stage, and then you leave all the instructions, you just keep on counting. 1 to 25, you remember, and you will discover that you forget in between. So that forget, okay, and then you recognize that you have forgotten and you restart. Calmly. You don't you need not to get frustrated. And if you can do it five or six or ten times, you are Forgetfulness, mind gets carried away by thought and impulses and emotions, falling deep into unconscious sleep, visiting. They all are the challenges posed to you by the impulsive mind. So when you understand this, you maintain awareness, you are persistent, you take over the mind.
When I stop the accounting, do nothing. So what happens in the five point awareness? Fourth point awareness, we understood that breath is moving in an infinite space. The mind then merges into that infinite space where and you are keep on counting outside that leaves the instinctive and the impulsive mind. But it takes time. One has to do the regular practice, then it works. Shanti 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 Bring your mind on the right hand, your mind on the left hand. Lift your both the palms, place it on your eyes, open the eyes inside, know your experiences, bring the hands down. How are you, Charlie? Good, I feel very rested. I enjoyed that and I felt like I just dropped down inside myself. Um, yeah. yeah, 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 as if I have stopped inside myself, these thoughts remain on the surface. That is a wonderful realization. How are you, John? Okay, okay Girish, Girish. Um, um, it was good. good. I um, especially, especially like your, your explanation, explanation of mental traffic. traffic. I had I had never, never Thought, thought of, of it in those, those terms, terms before. before. It's interesting. interesting. Very good. I think I spoke about this at least ten times before. <laughs> you you talk, talk about, about mental, mental dirt. dirt. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay, that's good. So mental traffic made a lot of sense. That is why, <laughs> you know. <laughs> that is why. That is why one day it clicks to the mind and then we realize, oh, it is so easy. Why I was feeling so that it is difficult. That is why the listening and learning has been a traditional discipline, which I say I don't know. Let me know it. How are you, Anne? I'm fine. Fine. Yeah, but unfortunately, unfortunately, I was, I was not, not that attentive. attentive. I, I fell asleep. asleep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We fell asleep. So, so, but yes, the sleep also gives in meditation a relaxation. So when we have done uh, for a longer period of time, and uh, we say one reason of falling into sleep is while practicing lying down. So let me do the practice while sitting, being comfortable. And the spine should be vertical. So that sometimes drops the unconscious sleep. So how are you made? I feel like, like I've been clearing out, out a cluttered room. room. Very good. And, and I, I noticed something that's happening, happening through these weeks. weeks. The, the bell, bell from, from the fire, fire station, station never, never rings, rings anymore. anymore. Oh. So that's why John seems to be happy. Yeah, that's what he was. That's, that's what, what I thought. thought. Oh, <laughs> good, John. John. So whether you say mental dirt, mental traffic, 
And I think I also explained that you are standing across a road watching the traffic. So you just become aware and any thought enters into the mind during the day, you just use the think, oh, it's a traffic, because it is uninvited, it is unwelcome. It is a strange thought that enters. First it enters, then you don't notice, then we get carried away, then we blame others. That is what is the emotional dependence is. So that is all today. We'll meet next week. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs>